<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Uh, so today's session is all about taking lecture notes in AP World History Modern. I'm Jamal Willis and... My name is Varun Karthala. I'm a former AP World History student and I'm very excited to be here. I'll be able to talk to you about my experiences in world history and going over Dolan. I'm Donald DiOrto, and I'm an AP World History teacher. Um, this is my third year teaching in there and about 16 years teaching. So I'm here to help you with these two exceptional individuals. All right. Thank you, Mr. DiOrto. Uh, so first of all, what is Fiveable? Um, we like to compare ourselves to Twitch, which is a very, very popular platform um, in the gaming world. And so we try to emulate the classroom setting about providing seamless interactions between teachers and students, <clears throat> sorry for that, and really connecting teachers and students from across the nation. Um, now we operate on a freemium model, as Jamal will mention later, but uh, I just want to mention that Fiveable is a very, very transformational platform for any student, and it can really help you in your AP World History bouts for any AP class. We offer over 15 AP subjects, so it's a very, very efficient, concise, and transformational tool, as you figure out later in today's stream the stream, um, some kind of things we're going to go over while you're with us here today. Uh, first of all, we have before taking lecture notes. Now we'll talk about being prepared for the lecture, being prepared for the classroom, and just being prepared overall for your AP World History bouts. Um, what to do while you're taking lecture notes, different note-taking methods, and then um, how to really stay engaged during any lecture, because that's a problem for many of us um, in today's AP classroom. It's just very, very noisy, distracting, and not easy to stay focused. We'll also talk about what to do after taking lecture notes, how to really sink in this information while you're at home after taking these notes. And then um, Mr. Diorto and I and Jamal will go over a live note-taking model to kind of give you um, a, a really hands-on experience with note-taking, as we'll mention um, in the note-taking methods forum. And then after this, any of you can ask us any questions in this Q&A. Um, Donald brings in some perspectives from a teacher perspective, and then Jamal and I can answer any questions um, about the student perspective. Any content, you know, we're here to help. Um, this is really a stream focused on you, so make sure to ask us questions. Uh, really milk this session and be engaged with us. Taking lecture notes. Um, so first of all, you got to be prepared for these lecture notes, as Jamal and I were talking about earlier. Um, read your assigned textbook. Last year, I was assigned the AMSCO World History Book. Again, this is the last course. Um, so the AMSCO World History Book was a transformational tool for me. Um, I read it throughout the year to supplement my in-class learning. And just know that you can't be... Um, a, a, you know, you can't do everything while you're in class. You got to do some stuff at home and you really need to prepare for your learning in class. And I really recommend uh, divvying up the pages that you need to know into a certain number each day. For example, if I was reviewing the Mongol Empire and I had like 30 pages on the topic and I had three days to do it, I would do 10 pages a day and just like get all this done within those 10 pages and those three days. Um, and it's a really optimal tool. Um, again, I used AMSCO. If you have any other textbook that you use, feel free to ask us about it. I mean, I've been in touch with most textbook of the world, Princeton, Barron's, like those. Also take notes on the textbooks for enhanced comprehension. Um, me, myself, I took notes on my AMSCO book. You don't have to do it, but I feel like it really increases your comprehension. I do so in world history or U.S. history um, online. So it's just like any way you do it, it's going to help you. Um, also watch a video on the topic at hand. Uh, Jamal was mentioning this. He's a really, really firm believer in this. Um, our recommendations for these videos are fiveable. Uh, Heimler's History, which is a YouTube channel focused upon really getting you prepared and giving you some visuals uh, for world history. John Green's Crash Course, again, this was made for the old course, so make sure to use only what you need to use or what's available to you for this course. And then also use Anti-Social Studies, which is a podcast on YouTube and on the web. And then Adam Norris's YouTube channel. Um, to be concise, you know, read your assigned textbook, take notes on it. Um, and then also make sure to watch our videos, make sure to watch videos from our favorite YouTubers we labeled down there. I just recently last week hosted a commercial exchanges live stream on Friday. So it's very, very essential for you to watch all these things and get these third party resources because I believe that that's the majority of the exam. It's just your own learning on your own. Obviously lectures count for a lot, but be prepared, be, be taking informative notes is very, very essential. So if you have any questions about these textbooks that we use, um, any textbooks that you use, want to ask us questions, uh, make sure to ask us. And I know Jamal just put out something. What was your AP textbook for World History AP? We'll stay here for a little bit, ask you about that. Guys, I also made a poll just uh, asking you guys, is your AP textbook helpful? 
just want to see how you guys are doing in your classes this year. Yeah, and I'm extremely sorry. I have a cold today, so like if I pop in and out, I sneeze. I mean, that's just that's mother nature. But yes, um, Strayer's Ways of World textbook with AMSCO, those are excellent complementary resources. I use both. Um, I wasn't assigned the Ways of the World, but like I feel like that has a lot of more uh, visual, visually appealing, and like concise information than the AMSCO. Um, if you have anything to add to that, Mr. Duarto. Yes, I can definitely tell you. I mean, for my class, I've used um, Strayer Ways of the World, um, AMSCO as well. I can tell you that um, John Green's crash course videos are exceptional. And now you can really, when you watch them, you can really look into what you need and what you don't. Um, all of your recommendations there are excellent. Plus, um, of course, Fiveable. I mean, to get this type of background and information and the people that we're working with right here, two students here, I mean, are exceptional at what they do. I've seen their work they know their stuff backwards and forwards. So it's a great place. I'm, I back all of it. All right, thank you. And if we don't have any questions about textbooks, well, I think we can go ahead and talk about some other stuff. Okay, what does it mean to be prepared? Being prepared means that you guys are understanding and comprehending the content before approaching a lecture. And this can be exponentially beneficial to you guys. So when it came to taking lectures in my AP World class, I always ensured that I reviewed the textbook or I watched a supplemental video that was very helpful to me because it just gave me insight into what I was getting into. And it also gave me knowledge and yeah, content so that I wasn't left behind or I didn't know what the teacher was talking about at any moment in time. And I just think that these are uh the things that ap world kids are supposed to do because it shows that you guys are actually taking an interest in your learning and actually and that you actually want to learn the content it's a vast uh body of knowledge in which you guys have to memorize but i feel like if you guys take these uh skills that we're giving to you you and you apply them to what you're doing that you guys can be very successful when it comes to taking the ap world test in may so by reviewing all of these, you'll be prepared for your lecture and it enables you to make more concise effective, and clean notes. I cannot stress to you how important it is to take clean notes, guys, because when it comes for time for you to review for a test or review for the big test, the AP World test in May, having clean and effective notes is what's going to push you guys to get an even better score and pass. So what do I mean by taking clean notes, making sure that your handwriting, handwriting is neat and making sure that it's legible. Also, just including diagrams or little annotations at the sides could be very helpful. And yeah, also another topic, anxiety. When it comes to anxiety, uh, just try to be prepared for any topic so you don't get anxiety. Taking these steps above can really ensure that you guys lessen your anxiety and calm yourself before every lecture. I know for some teachers, it's like, it's very hard in their classes just sitting through that lecture because of so, the amount of facts that they give to you guys. But I feel like if you guys take into, take into consideration the tips that we're gonna give you, it'll help you a lot. And just also one more thing, reviewing your key concepts is also a major thing in being prepared for your lectures. This will help you a lot and help you to overcome any uh, obstacles that you're gonna face in taking your lecture notes. Anything to add, Varun or Mr. Duarto? And just piggybacking I, off what you, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'd go ahead and just add in, if your teacher hasn't done so already, ask them to download the new CED. Um, it's the course, ex a course exam description for AP World History. There's a brand new one out, you can download it easily. And what's nice about that is it allows you to see exactly what the teacher's seeing as they're pacing their course. Yeah, and I think the CED or something with the College Board releases has uh, key concepts on it. 
And that's like exactly what, you know, the exam stresses. And I know that from experience. I mean, they don't throw in anything that's not on that. Um, And it's just really important to view these sources because as Jamal was saying, when you come into the classroom, you have this anxiety that's pent up within you. When you review these supplementary videos and reading textbooks, it gives you this extra sense of information of this additional edge upon your peers that you can use to your advantage. Uh, For example, that meme we have on the side, Barack Obama, uh, me when I read a textbook before taking notes, you know, that's a hole in one. That's a home run. Okay, I, just- I agree. And all these tips, I mean, just for nothing else, one of the things I add in with with my students is that I tell the students, are you serious about wanting to be eligible for a three, a four, a five on the AP world exam? If you are, which I can't imagine somebody being in a course not wanting to be, but I just ask them, I want them to be honest. The people that raise their hand, I say, look, pick five days a week, 20 to 30 minutes a day, be sitting down with your book, be sitting down with AMSCO, be sitting down with your textbook, be taking notes with that. I can tell you that the people who did that consistently five days a week, each week, it made an extraordinary difference. And these people had the higher scores. Um, and I'm sure that Jamal and Varun doing the same thing or more. And you know, it, it's like success leads results. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot. I mean, 30, 40 minutes a day is for an AP class. You need to put that work in to get the exam score that you want. Um, it's not enough being prepared and engaged in class. You need to do that extra reading, the extra videos, the extra searching up the web and being engaged with the content and knowing it inside and out, especially for that three, four and five. Those are the essential scores. All right, so while you're taking lecture notes, a few things I wanted to add. Um, First of all, pay attention. You can't succeed in the AP classroom uh, and take proper comprehensive notes without being an active listener. And what that means is like being engaged in the classroom, asking questions, for example. Uh, When you ask questions, it shows a teacher, first of all, that you're engaged and also puts information in your head much, much more clearly, concisely, and more permanently. Uh, Paying attention is essential because you can't really gain the information that you need to know without paying attention to it. Because when you're distracted by other things in your life, you can't really be zoned in. And being zoned in is essential for the AP classroom. I can't tell you how essential it is. I mean, those days when you don't have sleep, you can't stay zoned in. And that's just detrimental to your AP learning, as we'll talk about just right here. So as I was saying, get a good night's rest. Um, Jamal, I can tell you, I mean, even Mr. Diorto can tell you, students without a good night's rest will not succeed in the AP classroom. Um, It's kind of a given. I mean, when you're doing that, um, it's just... A good night's rest gives you the tools that you need to know. No matter how prepared you are without a good night's rest, you can't learn the information. You can't be prepared in class. And also I have a tip to add, have a success mentality of focus and poise. So when you're in the classroom every day, don't think about that day's lecture. Think about the AP exam. Think about how you want to do on the AP exam and how that impacts your life because that's what I did. And doing that gives you an, you know, an an alter your look on the topic and gives you something else to really focus on because the short-term results aren't that big, but the long-term results really, really are. And having that success mentality, looking to success, looking to the AP exam is really, really essential to your AP learning. Um, also sit next to reliable friends because I was in this for a while. Um, I was sitting next to people who weren't reliable. They were talkative. They didn't take their notes well. They were not active listeners. They weren't self-starters. And it distracted me, okay, because I couldn't take my notes while they're here because they keep talking to me. And so what I did is I just moved up in class. I moved up. I listened solely to the teacher, and I just hit that uh, out of the way because when you have this kind of thing, it makes you distracted, and it hinders your learning. It hinders your uh, success and your focus. Also, make sure to find a seat near the slide or projector or screen and teacher because when you're in the back of the room, which I was, by the way, I uh, wasn't in a very good spot with friends and the, the screen, it gives you much, much more um, of an ability to grasp this information and be hands on with it because you're right there. You know, um, the teacher never misses a question that you ask, you never miss a concept that's on the PowerPoint, and it gives you a much, much better look at taking notes. You don't have to go like that, you don't have to look around for taking notes. So, find a seat near the front of the projector. And up here, I have a model of what I'm going to talk about later called Cornell Notes, one of the uh, top notating mechanisms for myself. And then this is called the outlining method down here. And these aren't very clear, obviously. We'll talk about these in depth in a few moments here. But this is what Jamal uses and this is what I used to use. So they're both very, very effective forms of note taking. And we'll talk about them in a little bit. Um, And then Mr. Diorto is giving some great information here. If you want to go over that, that'd be great. 
Certainly. Um, I can tell you that all the tips that you're going to write here, paying attention, being an active learner, um, the good night's rest. I tell you, students, you're going to do a whole lot better if you're not coming into class, you know, on your second monster drink and it's starting to wear off and you're in between that zone between, you know, you're you're starting to shake. I've seen this before. I don't know whether to to go over and say, are you OK or to call 911? It's just <laughs> It gets uh, rough and I feel awful for you. So get that good night's sleep. Um, the success mentality, really, it really is. I mean, just take it one day at a time. We don't expect you to get it all in one sitting. Um, and if you're sitting by somebody, I guarantee if you can't, uh, I have students that come to me and go, is there any way you can move me over here or to the front or this and that? Because I really want to do well on this. Absolutely. I will do that in a heartbeat. And I can guarantee you any other teacher I know will happily do that. So don't be afraid to ask. I mean, be active. I can tell you as a, as when we're teaching, if you're into it, we get juiced, we get more into it. And then hopefully it's a, it's a synergistic thing where we keep powering each other. And um, Cornell Notes on there absolutely outlines and make sure they're legible. Nothing like taking a page of notes and then you can't read your handwriting. So do what you need to do so it'll be legible. Thanks. And thank you. Charles Becker was stating, yeah, I sleep on three hours of sleep a day. I mean, you can do that, but like it really hinders your learning. Um, I myself was doing that for a while in the beginning of the AP World History course, but I learned uh, from it that I couldn't focus while I was doing that. And so using, I'm glad you're here because using these platforms like Fiveable takes so much time out um, of your learning because you don't have to do that much. You know, for example, if you watch a three minute video, a 30 minute video, a one hour stream on Fiveable, you get so much more information than going in and doing this stuff on your own because we have it for you. We've done this before. Mr. Diorch was a teacher in the classroom. So we can't just, you know, it's, it's much better for you to be here with us. And I'm sure Jamal has something to add here. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to add that friends and them being the distraction is going to be key and crucial in your success in that AP World class or on that AP World test. So just make sure you have reliable friends and make sure you sit by like some of the more challenging AP World kids, if that makes sense, because they'll really push you into being better and also like having those arguments, like having arguments with them can uh, enhance your uh, writing on LEQs, SEQ, SAQs when it comes to the AP World Test in May. And also, I want to just address one of the polls where it says, is your textbook helpful? And one of you guys said no. That's where having good lecture notes is going to come in hand, as well as reviewing from videos and other sources. Yeah. And I also recommend if your textbook isn't helpful, get another textbook. Be a self-starter because I mean, if, even if you can't afford it, you can find um, some affordable version online. There's other textbooks. There's textbooks everywhere with AP World History Modern. Um, I myself, and I know Mr. Diorto um, recommended this as well. Uh, Freemanpedia is a free resource online. It's almost like a textbook for AP World History, and it gives you so many links that you can use. Um, also, YouTube videos, fiveable videos are almost like their own textbooks in full. Uh, definitely review AMSCO textbooks and, uh, and or the ways of the world, because those are both great resources, especially when you're going through this course. Yep. And you put it up there. I mean, click on that link. That's exactly what you need. Um, and you know, my mom always says you're the average of the five people you're around. And that's really how I feel. I mean, the people you're around really determine your success in the AP curriculum. All right. So we'll be discussing some note-taking methods here in this segment. Um, method one, Cornell notes. As uh, I was talking about earlier, it's a tried and true strategy for dedicated and high achieving learners. And so what you do first is you make a horizontal line from top to bottom, uh, dividing up the page into a 25% margin at the left approximately and like 75% at the right, as you can see here on the screen. Um, and also you put your name and date on the left column at the very, very top and then your class period and topic on the column at the very, very top, as I'll, you'll go through, through later. Um, and then on the left, you'll have some key topics. And then on the right, you'll have related information. 
Then we'll go through like the outlining method. We'll have more information, so on and so forth, graphics, tables, charts, lists, and quotes. So that's very essential. Um, also have vocab highlighted if you can on the left, and then have some definitions of these vocab on the right. Connect them to your AP learning. And the way I like the Cornell methods is this is exactly how I like it. I like it streamlined in this fashion. Uh, you can do YouTube videos on this to make it some more fancy, some, some better, um, but I really like it this way. The reason why is because when I'm looking through my textbook, I don't see some, you know, I don't see random, random, uh, just sentences going around everywhere, which is not a bad thing to have. But for the person I kind of am, I like to look at these things from a streamlined perspective, sorry. And like, for example, if I want to look for the Mongol Empire through my 100 pages of notes, I flip, 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 I can't find it. But with the Cornell Notes method, I know exactly where that thing is. I know exactly how to look for it. And I know you'll see later, it's a very effective form and know what you're looking for and I know where you're looking at. Okay, method two, the outlining method. This is more traditionally used by AP World uh, students, and I really like this because it gives me an outline of what I'm researching or I'm studying or reviewing, and it also puts everything right there in front of me, and okay, okay let me get into how I do my notes. Okay, first at the top, I would usually have the heading with the period or era in which I'm studying. Then I will go into my key concept at the top and then below it, the title of the section that I'm reviewing. And after that, I will have a subtopic that's usually a question or a quote that will help me to memorize that specific section. And then comes additional information, which is basically just the content from the book that will help me to memorize when it comes time for me to study for the AP World test or any test in general. And then A is any additional information such as lists or specific vocab words in which I need to study. And also diagrams or tables are very helpful because it gives you a vis visualization of what I need to memorize. So I really think that this is a good method because it's very simplistic and essential for any AP kid, any AP kid when it comes to studying. And it's just, anybody can grasp it and it doesn't really take that much to do. And it doesn't really take up much of your time if that makes any sense to you guys. And it really depends on what kind of lecture you're in. For example, um, I don't use the Cornell Note method every single time. There's sometimes where I just feel like, you know, today I want to use the outlining method. I don't um, restrict myself to one thing because it really, really takes away your ability to really focus, your ability to really gain from these methods if you restrict yourself to one thing. And Mr. Diorto was saying name and topic and date will help you as much, so much as you go back. Yeah, and seriously, they will. Because even with the outlining method, having a name and topic and date is very, very essential because I can just flip through my book and it, yeah, it takes like a few minutes more, but it really gives me um, a way to go back and look at it when I'm doing outlining notes. Um, and in that sense, it's much, much more uh, traditional, effective, and really either one works. I mean, Mr. Diorto has seen probably thousands of students, hundreds of students' notes. Uh, if he has anything to add, go ahead, Mr. Diorto. I think for either one of those methods, as long as you're dedicated with it, and truly, you can move back and forth or you can find one and roll with it. Either way, it just matters that you're consistent in your note taking. And when you're using your sources that way, you use your notebooks, your file as a way of being able to go back and go, oh, I see that, you know, on this day we were dealing with this, this part of the book. I know exactly what to go for. It really helps when we go into that three to four, five week period of review to be able to go back there. It helps you on your exams. So it, it's definitely a win. All right. yeah, I just wanted to add just a little something. These are just a suggestion in, on how to take your notes. It's obviously just a personal preference between me and Varun. You guys probably have different ways in taking your notes. We're not trying to silence you guys. It's just an option that you guys can consider because we think that it's very helpful. So, yeah. yeah, and Jamal put out something, how do you take notes, respond to that. 
I mean, I've seen notes like for my friends. I mean, I've seen mind maps as notes. They're also really effective. I've, I've used a bunch of mind maps in my own learning. So, I mean, all right. So have those out. I mean, if, if we have time, we can go back and look at those note-taking methods. So how to stay engaged during note taking. So asking questions is very essential because it shows that you guys have an interest in the topic and it also shows that you are curious on what you're learning. Asking uh, course uh, relevant questions is a great way to ensure that the content truly sinks in. And this really adds to your learning because you're gonna remember two, three weeks down the line how you asked that question and your teacher answered it. And you it just really sunk in your brain and just really ensure that you're asking questions during class. Taking notes is one of the quintessential ways in which you guys show your active listening and that you're participating in your classes during lectures, especially. Okay, and when it comes to taking notes, we're gonna discuss what you do after them, like printing notes, stuff like that. So make sure you stay in tune for that. And third point, if you really can't pay attention, what should you do? Record the lecture or try to drink some coffee before you go or join a study session. That could be very helpful. I know at some schools, you have to ask permission from the teacher to record, yeah you'll just have to make sure you get permission from her or him. And when it came to recording notes, that was very helpful for me uh, because I remember sometimes in class where I was running on two hours of sleep from doing homework for my other AP classes and I couldn't stay awake. And just having that uh, live recording really helped me a lot. So yeah, make sure you guys request permission from your teachers and setting up a study session with reliable friends or partners is very helpful because it also gives you input, gives you input from other people as well as a new perspective. And it also makes you make those, those historical connections. These can be very helpful when it comes to taking FRQs or SAQs or LEQs on the AP test. Okay, paying attention coffee, Starbucks, that's what I'm gonna emphasize to you guys because these, they give you energy, but at the same time, they're gonna be very detrimental to your health. So just getting that sleep in general will be more effective than say monster drinks or coffee. So make sure you guys really take into mind when it comes to studying or taking lecture notes for AP World, your health, is very crucial anything to add guys i think just a i'll tell you from um from college in my days i spent seven years as a graduate student and one of the ways we survived was that we had enormous amounts of books that we had to go through long story short we'd get together I'd find the students that were really serious and I'd go, hey, can we get together? Let's do a study session. You all can do this online now. You got cameras and things like that. So we had to get together, but that helped that helped us tremendously. And I can take you back to the people who did really well. And I they were in study groups. They were getting together. They were partnering with other people. So great tips on that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't recommend better. Yeah, and uh, me, myself, when you're in a study group, I mean, you just absorb so much information. And also, like, it's a tested thing in psychology because I'm going through these things. Um, in psychology, they say that if you're teaching somebody content, you retain it almost 75% better. So, I mean, when you're teaching somebody something, you can really, really gain that information so much better. Um, I'm sure Mr. Duarto can tell you because he's been teaching this stuff for years now. Uh, and yeah, it just sinks in when you do it to other people because you just get that information in your head, um, just input it in your head, you encode it much faster. All right, so after taking lecture notes. Um, so first of all, I'd recommend watching a video to rejog your memory. Um, I know Jamal says this a lot, preferably from reliable sources like Fiveable, 
Crash Course or Heimler's History, which again, Crash Course and Heimler's History are YouTube channels. But watching videos gives you a really, really good visual aid to help you in learning. Um, I know five of what we do a lot of visual things. We do like animations. Uh, we do little, for example, last week I did a commercial expansion thing where I had like little maps of the Silk Road and different religions, trade items upon it. So even Heimler's History, we have great, great things on these places, which can really reach on your memory and make you look at it from another sense. Because when you're looking at it from in one sense, you don't gain as much information. And going back to the friends theory, when you're looking at it from multiple perspectives, you gain so much more information than you would from one perspective. And also reviewing your notes. I mean, you can't take notes when you don't review them because psychologically, again, I'm going back to AP Psych, when you review your notes the night after, your performance is exponentially increased. And it's, it's much, much better than like sitting there taking notes and trashing them. Because when you look at them over again, first of all, you get secondary, um, you know, review. So on one night, you have that in your head, review it, get it in your head, leave it. Go to your exam, your unit exam, uh, get it in your head, leave it again. Then go to the AP exam, review it one more time. So keep constantly reviewing your notes, preferably the night after a day's lecture. And like Jamal was saying, print your online notes. And sometimes if you take them on paper, you may want to put them on the online notes because me, myself, um, I took a lot of online notes last year after I took them on paper. So I just like transferred them and like even pictures online because you can look at these notes on the AP exam, you know, week, AP exam month, the time leading up to the AP exam. You can look at your notes and gain that information once again. Because a lot of times you lose your stuff. I mean, you're a high school student. I mean, you might fall prey to losing your things. It's a commonality. So definitely try to print your online notes, post them online uh, on a Google Docs, something like that. Um, also take a quiz, which is an optional thing, but it really helps the four unit exams and the AP exam itself because there's something called the testing effect. And it's much more effective in psychology when you test your own knowledge um, after, you know, testing your knowledge after reviewing the information. So, for example, if I'm reviewing the Mongol Empire, I can just take a little quiz in the Mongol Empire going over my own stuff. I can even make my own quiz. I can use Fiveables, a game of fives quizzes. And so using this testing effect to your own advantage is extremely, extremely influential. And uh, and yeah, teaching means 75 plus retention rate. Study groups help you to do this. Um, AMSCO has quizzes that you can use anytime, paper book and digital version. Um, I know AMSCO doesn't have the answer keys on there, but you can find answer keys online. They post them up. And yeah, like Jamal was saying. And if you have anything to had, go ahead, both of you. I mean, that's my spill. I just wanted to add that an an amazing test prep for me was using Amscope as well as uh, Khan Academy because they really emphasize the key concepts on what you're learning in AP World. And going back to printing online notes, just having that tangible proof in front of you, just where you can highlight and put uh, a little annotations at the sides or connotations, my, sorry it can be really helpful so just keep those things in mind anything else to add no it looks great thank you all right so a live take no take model so for this section mr dior to look kind of giving over um a lecture that he made it for us today like a sample lecture a few minutes here and jamal and i will be in live time going through a little a demo model of each of our lectures and each of our ways of approaching that and then we'll go through and look at them and have you guys look at them and see how we did uh, how y'all would uh, really want to improve that okay so before i do that guys make sure you're asking questions and answering the polls because we just want your feedback and see how we're really relaying this information to you guys. So, yeah, it's time to do the lecture. Yep. Um, so what's the talk, topic about, Mr. Diorto? Well, today we're going to actually do a fiveable string that we've did, uh, done recently on Dar al-Islam. So it's right. D-A-R and then al-Islam. <laughs> And really, this period is 1200 to 1450 CE. So this is a classic um, unit one. If you're looking at your course, at your CED, you'll see that it fits in there. By the way, in classrooms, when you see these things posted on the board, please be sure you know, take advantage, you use them. You probably have the college board poster up there. So go ahead and use that. 
So today what we're going to do is with Dar al-Islam, we're looking at at the we've seen the spread of Islam before in the six set in the 700 CE, 800 CE area where that was under the Umayyad dynasty. Then we're going to shift over to the Abbasid dynasty. Now, Dar al-Islam, this at point is where we're going to see the Abbasid dynasty come apart and we're going to see a whole new fracturing or set up into brand new empires. So for instance, the, one of the big players in this is going to be the Turks. The Turks are coming from the Chip, the Kipchak, C-I-P, C-H-A-P, Kipchak region of Central Asia. And this is a Turkish area. So what we're going to do is we're going to see, first of all, you're going to go to what is present day Turkey or Anatolia. And when you're in present day Turkey, Anatolia, you're going to see the Seljuk Turks, S-E-L-J-U-K Turks come in through, come in and invade the eastern part of what's today Turkey, we call it Anatolia, and then pushing down into Palestine, what's today Syria, Lebanon, Israel, and they're going to okay. push into these areas as well. Sorry, Dr. Duarte, I'm having a little trouble with the, just taking the notes in general because it's giving me an issue. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, so I was unable to see it for a while, but you can continue now. Yeah. Okay. Let me know if you want to go back. So we go back, we've got the Seljuk Turks and they're coming into Anatolia or Turkey. And remember, they're pushing up against the Byzantine Empire and they're starting to take territory away from them. Then you're going to have a remnant of the Abbasid dynasty, um, al Sali. And he's going to, with the help of other central Turks, which are called Mamluks, M-A-M-L-U-K-S, Mamluks. And these are basically trained Turkish soldiers. And these people are going to be brought in for other reasons, but he's going to bring them together. He's going to overthrow the prior Abbasid dynasty ruler, and he's going to set up the Mamluk dynasty in what today is Egypt, Libya, um, parts of Israel, North Africa, along the Mediterranean Sea. The third group you're going to see is the Turks are also going to push, but they're going to go towards what is today Afghanistan, Pakistan, and especially India. India and where you see Delhi today and New Delhi, also along the Ganges River, Pakistan, these areas are going to be invaded by central Turks from Central Asia. They're going to form the Delhi Sultanate. And this is, and the Delhi Sultanate is going to hold control over that area for quite a while. And you're going to see an extensive Muslim influence. By the way, all three of these groups, once they invaded, they were exposed to Islam and they became Muslim. So all three of these groups would become Muslim empires. This is why we call it Dar al-Islam. I will also go ahead and throw in a bonus for you all, an additional fact. Now, this is not part of Dar al-Islam, but it is an incredibly important part of understanding um, when the Umayyad and the Abbasid prior, that means before the Dar al-Islam period, the Umayyads go into Spain and you're gonna see in Spain, which they called Al-Andalus. 
So it's A L, then a dash A N D A L U S. And Al Andalus is, is Moorish Spain and Portugal today. So if you see about three fourths of that being taken over, this is where they're known well as the Moors. And the Moors are going to hold on to that area in Spain for almost 900 plus years. You're going to see a tremendous build of Islam and Islamic culture, architecture, that's all going to influence into Spain, into Portugal. It's going to influence Spanish and Portuguese languages. So sometimes when teachers teach, you might see that they're throwing in a bonus right now or something that is not part of Dar al-Islam. This is a good point that you can do one of two things. You can either one, be adding that in there, but you can additionally be taking notes. For instance, I'm watching people right now, like Varun, he's organizing his notes on the side. Um, Jamal, I can see is adding on extra things on there and making sure his points are spot on. So anytime you see somebody do something like that, the additional information is great. If you want to seize it, you feel like it's good, go for it. But for some reason you're going, okay, this is great. I'm glad for the extra topic, but I want to lock down the three groups like the Seljuk Turks. I want to lock down the Mamluk and I want to lock down the Delhi Sultanate. Then go ahead and lock those down, highlight them, add in some notes, make sure you've got what you need. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great lecture. I learned some stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Usually I, I have background materials going and things like that. So in PowerPoint, so um, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the notes and I'm seeing that you all had to move very adeptly in order to when you don't have the visual stuff. So hopefully in all your classes, you're getting a lot of visual materials that's reinforcing what's being said. All right. Yep. And I think I put it up there. Pretty much it's loading. Um, so if you can see our models, I mean, obviously over on the left, I have a model with, as I was saying, I put the period, uh, I'm going to change the name of who it was because that was my old teacher. Okay, so nothing will be good. Um, my period, my name, my date, the date, um, and then just the topic of the lecture. And then I have the introduction, the Turks, the Mamluks, and then the Islamic, uh, Darul Islam, things like that. And so I just structured them, highlighted what's important, bolded what's important. And it's just when I go back and look at it, I can find what I'm looking for really, really easily through this method. Um, so we'll move on to Jamal's. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just want to apologize because most of the – lecture notes i was unable to write because of my like technical difficulties for parts of it i had to be looking on the slide to see what was going on but for me i i would usually highlight notes and make sure that uh, specific font sizes indicate that these notes are more important than like some other notes but it just didn't turn out as how I planned it. Sorry about that. But no, I, I can, think, yeah, I think it'd be great <laughs> what you had. But I would just uh, split it up into the period, the, the subtitle, make sure you have that definitive time frame, and then just along the lines have bullet points for the specific information that you want to take down. Yeah. And if you liked Mr. Diorto's session, he can talk to you about his Sand Road session tomorrow. Um, you want to go ahead and do that? Sure. We're going to be going into the um, Trans-Saharan trade tomorrow on Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we also have another great um, fiveable lecture that's coming on AP World that follows back to back at 9 p.m. with an exceptional with Jed will be coming on as well. So we're definitely going to help you get in gear for that. So if you can join us live, we'd love to have you with us.
Yeah, for sure. And I spelled Kipchuk wrong, as I uh, as I just understood. It's actually K I P C C H U K. Uh, my bad there. I never learned about the Kipchuk region in AP rural last year, but it's a tough name. A quick thing <laughs> in, when you're going over your notes is just know that when I was talking about Al Andalus, mm -hmm. I, I threw that in there because sometimes I'm sure you've probably run into this Varun and Jamal where a teacher will find something that is additional material and it may not be exactly you know your topic in there but they love this so much that they want to give you that extra information so that's a neat time where you can either listen and just kind of absorb that or if you feel well i better stay on just darul islam with the turks the mamluks and the delhi sultanate then Go back through your notes and I could see both of you kind of going back and putting those notes together so it comes in better. Yeah, and I'll want to lose. I mean, um, that's just kind of good, really good context. And also I took note of that really well because a lot of times when I have that extra information, the teacher includes it on the test, but it probably won't be on the AP exam, but like they include it on the test. So like I try to get a head up uh, an advantage by doing that. Also, like, that's kind of one of the things I loved in AP World last year. I mean, Al Andalus was the one place in Europe where the Moors really made a stand there. It was the Iberian Peninsula. So it's really interesting to me. And so when it's interesting to me, I usually bold it up and be like, you know, this is some good context for myself. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you know anything about Al Andalus, it was one of the only places after the Charles Martel's hold off at the Battle of Tours. All right, so before we get off of here, we'll talk about um, anything you want to ask us, Mr. Diorto, myself, um, and Jamal are all great resources to talk about content recap, terminology, key events, life experiences, AP skills, and course advice. So, I mean, if, if you guys want to add anything else um, to the lecture or if any of the you know, students we have here want to ask anything. Okay, right. so with that being said, I think we should conclude this live stream. Uh, so make sure you guys look back and you guys can preview this video if you need additional information that you guys didn't type, quite catch. And so I hope that all of this information on taking lecture notes helps you guys and makes you, sorry, and is beneficial to you passing that AP test in May. Anything to add? Thank you for coming. Um, we love to be able to talk to you here today. I did. And, you know, it's just keep coming to these streams, keep pushing yourself. Coming to these shows us, shows, you know, your parents, your teachers that you're really wanting to invest your own time into um, benefiting your own education, your grades. So keep doing this kind of thing because it's very ex exponentially increasing your score. As he said, the AP exams in May. Start studying now. Cause that's just my, that's a success mentality. Again, start studying now, look for that exam in May, be here. All right, go ahead. If you guys aren't subscribed to Fiveable, make sure you subscribe to their YouTube, their Instagram and their Twitter at think Fiveable. And so to conclude today's uh, uh, session, bye guys and have a great Fiveable day. Peace. Have fun.